Hey, good morning. It's a great day to have a great day. I am recording this on Monday. Of course, you'll probably watch this on Tuesday, but from where I sit right now, it's a beautiful sunny day. The grass is green. Things are looking great out there. Um, it's just a good day to have a good day. So let's just cherish each day. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start the lesson. And what we're going to do today, first I want to do a little review of place value. Okay, so um, remember that, here's your decimal point. So we've got ones, tens, hundredths. To the right of the decimal, we have tenths with a th, hundredths with a th, and thousandths with a th. Okay, now um, let's talk about rounding to the nearest tenth because that's what we're going to do in our homework today on Delta Math. So today is April, I'm recording this on April 27th. So let's just say I have a number like 427 and right now it is 1242. So I'm going to go one, two, four. Okay. If I have a number like that and they say round it to the nearest tenths, I'm going to look at the decimal just to the right of the number I want to round to. So here, if I want to round to the nearest tenths place, my number is 427.124. Okay, I want to round to the nearest tenths. I'm going to look at this decimal right here. If it's greater than or equal to 5, I'm going to round this one up. If it's not, I am not going to round. So round it to the nearest tenth, this would be 427.1. Okay, now let's suppose that this number was 427.19, I don't know, 3. It doesn't matter what this number is. We don't look at this number. If we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we look at the number just to the right. Since this is greater than or equal to 5, we're going to round this one up. So this number would actually be 427.2 rounded to the nearest tenth. Okay, um, all right, I just wanted to review that real quick. And now we'll get right into the, the lesson. What we're going to do is use trig to find sides and angles. Okay, now I am actually not going to teach you this lesson. This is going to be taught. Actually, uh, you're going to have uh, uh, an announcer come in and walk you through this lesson. So I'm just going to hand off the microphone here. Okay. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to uh, look at using trig to find a side. Um, we've already got the game plan set up. We're gonna we're looking at what we're looking at here in triangle KLM. The measure of angle M is 90 degrees, angle L is 55, and LM is 59 feet. It looks pretty straightforward to me. Find the length of KL to the nearest tenth of the foot. Okay, uh, who's coach gonna bring in? We're gonna just find out. I we we don't know. Okay, uh, we got we got the team, the players on the bench all ready to go. They're uh, they're all ready to go. Who who who's he gonna bring in here? I'm not I'm not really sure. Uh, coach is still deciding. Okay, looks like he's he's made a choice. He's sending in Brown. Brown's gonna come in and and uh, Brown's gonna start uh, drawing out the first the first play here. Uh, triangle KLM and M is 90 degrees. Let's see what he can do. Is he gonna make that right turn correct? Oh, he did. He made that right turn. Nice, nicely done. Um, is he gonna be able to complete the play and pull it up top there? Uh, let's just find out. Oh, nicely done. Nicely done. Okay, he's going to come back in, make sure he fills in that right angle. Oh, that was well done. That was well done. Okay, so uh, what's he going to do next? Oh, good, good, good. Labeling. Yep. Uh, he's thinking it through here. Okay, um, he, okay. He's going with, oh, nicely done. He's going with K and L for the acute angles. That is nice. Okay. Um, He's reading more here. He's seeing 55 degrees. Is he going to be able to find the correct location for this, people? Let's just find out. Um, oh, he is. Look at that. 55 degrees right there for angle L. Nicely done. And then LM, what's he going to do with that? Um, well, yeah. Um, he's going to go, oh, well done, well done, nicely done, nicely done. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. No. Okay. Uh, let's see. We need to find the length of KL to the nearest tenth of a foot. So, what's he doing? Okay. He's 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 designating this this side as X because he's he's okay. He's done a good job. He knows that's what we need to find. So that's X. 
Oh no. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, he just flipped his cap. Oh my gosh, that's bad. He's he's going to be out for the season. He is out for the season. Who's coach going to put in? We don't know. Okay, Brown's out. Brown's out. Who's coach going to bring in? I don't know. Oh, coach is coming in strong with Red. Okay, Red's going to take over now. Um, Red looks at this, and uh, what's Red going to do? Well, he wants to find the length of KL. So, okay, he realizes that Brown has this set up correctly. And uh, he's looking at this, and he's looking at uh, angle L is here. Let's see if he can pull it out here. With respect to angle L, we all know that this side is the adjacent side. Let's see if he fills it in correctly. Oh, he does. I can tell just by the way he started that play. He had that right. Okay, good. That's the adjacent side. He's looking at this other side. I can see him thinking it through. Okay, he correctly realizes. Let's hope. Let's hope he gets this right. Yes. Good job, Red. Red realizes that is, in fact, the hypotenuse. So, uh, what's he doing? He's, he's going off to the side here. He's going off to the sideline for a second. He's, he's doing... I don't know what he's doing. Okay, he's writing down some kind of acronym. Uh, he's looking at which... What's he looking at here? Okay, he's circling... Okay, folks, he's choosing correctly. He is realizing that with the given information, he's got... Uh, He's thinking this through. He's got the adjacent, and that he's looking for the hypotenuse. And with respect to angle L, he's going to choose to use cosine. And so this is what I'm seeing. He's using cosine. He is he's doing this right. Now, if he can just write it down and, and come up with the answer, let's just find out. So he's saying cosine of, uh, what's he going to write? Okay, good. He remembered to put in the angle there. The cosine of the angle is, the, of course, we know it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Uh, he's thinking it through. He's going to go, oh, nicely done. Nicely done. Okay, good job. Good job with the setup. Oh, wait, wait, we got something going on here. There's some scuttlebutt here over on the bench. What do we, what do we got? We got, we got something going on over at the bench. Okay, there seems to be a huddle on the bench there. Um, I think, uh, I think they're pulling Red out. Okay, Red's done a good job. They're going to give Red a little rest here. Who are they going to pull in now? They're pulling in Blue. All right, Blue. Blue coming in strong. Blue is coming in strong. Um, Blue's just gonna. Blue's the calculator guy. He's always been strong with a calculator. Uh, let's see what, what Blue does here. So, so Blue's gonna. Blue's just gonna turn on the calculator. Let's hope. Let's hope he gets that going. Okay, we got. Okay, that's good. He's clearing everything else out. Good. You, you know, you got to clear the field when you're doing this. Uh, what's he gonna do now? He's gonna hit. Uh, He's going to hit the cosine. He's putting in the angle measure, 55. Oh, he's backing up for a minute. Oh, what's he what's he doing here? Okay, he's he's making sure that okay. He wants to go three places down, move to the right. Oh, he's putting the calculator in degree mode. I got to tell you people at home, this is a good move. Okay? Let's let's just see if we can replay that slowly. Um, let's see what he did. Uh he hit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if he'll do that again. Yeah. Okay. Hit mode, and he went down three places, making sure he's in degree mode. Okay. Second quit to get back to the home screen. Way to go. Way to go. Okay. Now, what's he doing? Okay. He's calling up cosine. Fifty-five. He knows now it's correctly in degrees. He's hitting enter. Mm-hmm. What's he gonna do next? Okay, he's, he appears to be studying the number here. And he's writing down. He's writing down the cosine of 55 degrees to four decimal places. Okay. Okay, he's, he's working out the problem now. He's working out the problem. Uh, what's he doing next? Okay, he's putting that over one to set up a ratio because he realizes X is in the denominator, you know? I think this is a great strategy here. Uh, what's he doing next? Okay, this is a fancy, this must be some type of a, a fancy move here. Um, let's just wait and see what he's going to do next. Oh, I see what he did there. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. He pulled out that new play. He set up a ratio, a proportion. Uh, he did a little cross product thing so he could solve for X. What's, what's he going to do next? Okay, he's calling for a substitute. He's calling for a substitute. His part is done. 
Okay, he's come green. Green is coming in. Green is coming in strong. Green has always been strong at solving for X here in this type of situation. Um, let's see what he's doing. Oh, okay, folks, this is good. Okay, okay, this is phenomenal. Okay, people, did you realize that he, he understood that this was the coefficient of X, so that's what we need to divide by, so we get X equals, okay, he's going back to the calculator, and uh, he's going to, what's he going to do here, people? He's going to type in, hopefully he'll type that in correctly. Okay, uh-huh, coming in, yep. Oh, would you look at that. Okay, he's got that answer. He's got that answer. That's looking good. Um, he's thinking this through. He's going back to the original problem. Okay, he's, he's underlined some important parts, some important instruction strategies. He's going to look at this. He's going to shoot around this way. He's going to shoot north. He's going to take a look at that. He's going to shoot south again. And then he's going to, what's he going to do? Aha, uh -huh. he's going to write this. Now let's see if he can pull this out correctly. He's looking at that, underlining the word 10th. Okay, good for him. That's an important part. Uh-huh, he's looking at that. He's looking at that. Uh-huh. Okay, he's going to put, oh, that, oh, can you believe it? He is, oh, he is doing the happy dance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Doing the happy dance. And he, in fact, has the correct answer. Nicely done. Boom. Way to go, Green. Okay, way to go, team. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Okay, I am out. You folks have a great day. Well, hi, everybody. This is Mrs. Beck with Back At You. Um, I tell you, I watched that game. That was a good game. That was a good game. I like how green, I like how the team pulled it out. The color team, they pulled it out. It looked real good. I was really happy with that. That looked awesome. Okay, um, you know what? Now that I've seen how this is played, I'm going to try another one. Okay, here's the one I'm going to pull up in triangle ABC, angle A is 90 degrees, angle B is 40 degrees, and BC equals 25. Find A, B. Okay, uh, I'm going to follow along with, with uh, what the team did here. Angle A is 90 degrees. Angle B, well, one of these, we have to label the other two B and C. It doesn't really matter where you put them. They just have to be the other two acute angles. Angle B is 40 degrees. And side B, C is 25. So that's the hypotenuse. Now we need to find AB. You know what? I want to change that. Let's find AC. Here's AC. Okay, now we have to think through Sokotoa. With respect to the angle that we're given, the acute angle, the 90, don't worry about that. With respect to the acute angle that we're given, we're looking for X. That's opposite in this particular case. In this particular case, 25 is the hypotenuse. So the trig function that involves opposite and hypotenuse is the sine. So we're going to choose sine based upon the information given. So we're going to say sine 40 degrees is opposite x over hypotenuse, which is 25. Okay, now you're going to get your calculator out. Make sure you're in the correct mode. So hit mode. Make sure you're in degree mode. You can see that. Okay, make sure you're in degree mode. Now I'm going to pull up sine of 40 degrees. Sine 40. And I get 0. 0.6427. Actually, that would round to 8. 6428 equals x over 25. 
now here x is in the numerator so I don't have to set up a proportion where we did here because x was in the denominator so we had to set up a proportion to solve for x here x is in the numerator so I can actually just multiply both sides by 25 to get the value of x so this number times 25 and I get 16.069 16.069 now again round it to the nearest tenth here's the tenths place here's the number just to the right now that's greater than or equal to 5 so I'm going to round up so my answer here is going to be 16.1 Okay, and that's the answer you'll enter on Delta Math. Um, so sometimes you'll use sine, sometimes you'll use cosine, sometimes you'll do tangent. It just depends upon the information given and what you're looking for. You have to figure out which one to use. Okay, so that's that part, using trig to find a side. And now, let's use trig to find an angle. Okay, take a second, hit pause if you need to, write this down. In triangle HIJ, the measure of angle J is 90. H, oh, I have to put H and I. Again, it doesn't matter where you put H and I. I'll do it this way this time. H and I are the acute angles. HI is 88 feet. And IJ is 62 feet. Find the measure of angle I to the nearest tenth of a degree. Okay, with respect to angle I, this would be the adjacent, and this would be the hypotenuse. So the trig function involving adjacent and hypotenuse is, you guessed it, cosine. So the cosine of angle I is adjacent 62 over hypotenuse 88 okay now here we're looking for an angle measure so the way to do that is use its inverse cosine and it looks like this on your calculator you're gonna hit cosine inverse of that value 62 over 88 enter so get your calculator out I'm gonna hit clear I'm going to hit second cosine, so that calls up cosine inverse, and then I'm going to put in this number, 62 divided by 88, close parentheses, equals. Okay, I get 45.207. Okay, we have to find the measure of angle I to the nearest tenth of a degree. So again, I'm looking at the tenths place. Since the number just to the right is not greater than or equal to 5, we're not going to round up. So that means the measure of angle I is 45.2 degrees. Okay, so that's how you find an angle. You use inverses, cosine inverse. Okay, um, let's just for fun, let's find the measure of angle H using the same problem. Find measure angle H. So again, this is J and it's 90. Here's I and here's H. We know that IJ is 62 and we know that IH is 88. Now here if I wanted to find the measure of angle H with respect to angle H, I'm given 62. In this case, this is the opposite side to angle H. This is still the hypotenuse. So in this case, since I'm looking for angle H, I would choose sine because I have opposite and hypotenuse. So I would set it up sine H is opposite over hypotenuse. To find the angle measure, I would call up sine inverse of that value 
and that'll give me the angle. So now I'm going to call up second sine, which is sine inverse, 62 divided by 88, close parentheses, equal. Okay, I'm getting 44.792, that would actually round to 3 right there, is my readout. Okay, now again, I'm rounding to the nearest tenth. So this number, just to the right of the tenth, is bigger than or equal to 5. So I am going to round up. So angle H, measure angle H is 44 point, I'm going to round that up to 8. And that would be the measure of angle H for this particular problem. Okay, now sometimes you will use tangent. We didn't use tangent in either one of these, but if you were given a triangle and you had this value and this value, and you need to find this angle right here, let's just say that's angle Q, in this case, you have opposite and adjacent. So you would set it up, tangent Q is opposite over adjacent, 5 over 4. And then you would call up tan inverse of 5 fourths. So you know what, let's just do this real quick. So I hadn't planned on doing this, but this is just a little side problem. Okay, so second tan, tan inverse, 5 divided by 4, close parentheses, equals 51.34. So it's 51.34. I'm not going to round up. I'm going to make that 51.3, so that's the measure of angle Q. So measure of angle Q is 51.3 degrees. So sometimes you will use tangent. It just depends upon the information you're given. Okay, that is it, everybody. So you're going to find the using trig to find a side, and you're going to use trig to find an angle. So that's what you're going to try in Delta Math today. You guys have a great day, great talking to you, and I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.